Hey, welcome to Coffee with the Dean. Today, third year student Jared Gein uh, joins us for the Coffee with the Dean. Jared grew up in a small rural town in Utah, and he attended and earned his BA from Utah State University. Jared, it's great to have you here, and thanks for joining us this morning for Coffee with the Dean. Yeah, thanks for having me. So Jared, let's start off. What, what was growing up in rural Utah like? So it was a, a little bit different um, just because I grew up with, like, on a small family farm. So we had cows, pigs, and chickens, but I spent most of my time hauling hay bales, removing water pipe for neighbors. Uh, so it was a very hands-on experience, quite literally. Um, and then transitioning to academia was a lot more studious. You don't spend as much time outside. And so that was a little bit of a transition, a lot more intellectually demanding and a lot less physically demanding. But ultimately, I think the ideas of like hard work and really pushing myself have, have stuck with me. Well, there's, there's a big change from, from that, going to Utah and ending up at University of California, Irvine School of Law. So, so you have to tell me, what, what spurred your interest in pursuing a law degree and what brought you to UCI? I think I was always a little bit interested in becoming a lawyer, but it wasn't a reality for me until the semester I was going to graduate. Literally, I think it was a month away from graduation. And I met with my friend's mom, and she asked me what I was doing, and she told me that she thought I would be a lawyer and went into the reasons why. And the more she talked about it, the more excited I got about it, and that's what really pushed me to start researching law schools and the LSAT and seeing what it would look like, and that's ultimately what got me into law school. You know, I'm struck with is how much public interest and pro bono work you, you've done. Uh, so what kind of pro bono work are you involved with or have you been involved with? And, and I know we'll have to keep that short because yeah. the resume is big. <laughs> right. and, and why are you so passionate about that work? It all started in undergrad. I think my sophomore year at Utah State University when I came out as queer and really started diving into that community is when I fell in love with public interest work. And I loved the advocacy work. And so starting into law school, I actually wanted to take a break a little bit and be like, let's just focus on school. But that didn't work. I have a problem saying no and not taking on things. I like to get really involved. So I started out with the Transgender Legal Assistance Clinic my first semester, and I'm still doing that now as a student leader. And I also did street law and Saturday Academy of Law, which are both two programs working with like high school students or junior high students, teaching them various aspects of the law or just helping them throughout their curriculum. And then I've also done the spring break trip. So last year we were in Montana, year before that was Mississippi. And so it's just been an opportunity for me to give back a little bit that makes a lot of sense. You know, you listed a number of programs you've been involved in and some of the pro bono work you did. I'm going to ask you the impossible question, but of all of those, which one do you think had the most impact on you and which one did you enjoy the most? Okay, so the spring break trips were phenomenal. This last one was actually really awesome. We got to go and work um, in tribal courts in Montana, and that was just a completely wild experience. And can I ask, have you, had, have you had any exposure to tribal courts before, or had you ever been to Montana? No, um, I think I've passed through Montana. Uh, tribal courts, no. My uncle on my mom's side lives on an Indian reservation, and so I had like a little bit of exposure or some knowledge, but definitely not the deep dive we got over spring break. And it was, it was just almost bizarre because the legal system operates differently because they don't fall under the same constitutional protections that the United States have. Um, and so that was really cool. But overall, I'd probably have to say the Transgender Legal Assistance Clinic has had the biggest impact on me. Um, it hits a special place in my heart because I'm part of the community, um, but also because I get to work with minors as part of that. We help people change their legal name and gender markers and most of the people we work with are adults, but we do get several minors at each of our clinics. And that always hits me hard because minors can't file petitions on their own. The parents have to file on behalf of the minor or the guardians have to file on behalf of the minor. And seeing and knowing that these parents or these guardians are supporting their child through this process 
is like mind blowing to me. Like that that wasn't a consideration or an option. Growing up in Utah, like I wouldn't imagine that happening and it's just really special to see and to be part of that experience with these people. It seems like you've done a lot on the intersection of youth and children and queer community and it's uplifting as you say. You know, I mentioned at the start that you're a third year student. So in addition to all this public interest and pro bono work, you've also got a job, right? And, right. And where, where are you going to be working once you graduate? So I'm going to be working at a large law firm up in San Francisco, um, which satisfies a few of my things. I wanted to stay in California for one. I really want to work in a big city and have that big city experience. Uh, but I don't plan to stop doing pro bono work. Um, I didn't want to do pro bono work as like go into public interest job, for example, because part of the enjoyment for me is knowing that I don't have to, but choosing to do it anyway. Um, I'm not getting paid to do it. It's completely voluntary. And to me, that creates a different experience um, because I'm not relying on those services. I'm not asking for anything in return from these people. I'm not hoping to get a paycheck from it. Um, definitely getting a paycheck from the law firm but I want to continue that pro bono work. And so that was one of the things I looked at when I was looking at different law firms is seeing what pro bono practices they currently had in place and what they wanted to do with pro bono because some firms tend to push back against it because it's not billable. It's not generating revenue for the firm, um, but others have really embraced that. And so that's where I wanted to end up is somewhere that I could constantly give back to the community and be supported in doing so. Yeah. What, what kind of work, uh, you know, while you're doing the billable work, what kind of work do you think you'll be doing or do you know yet? I'll be in the transactional practice. So it's the business development side of things, which is, it hits my interests. I have way too many interests because I think I would have been happy either way. Um, but going back to me initially wanting to work in business and kind of going up the corporate ladder, now I'm just going through that process, but on the legal side. So now I'm helping people form companies or funds and work through their charters and stock issuances and things like that. So it's really kind of the same thing, just the other side of the coin, um, just a different perspective on it. But yeah, starting transactional and then I'll probably be doing um, pro bono litigation work just because litigation tends to be the vast majority of pro bono opportunities. So I've got to ask, what's your uh, what's your favorite part of UCI law? We, um, you know, our hope is a lot of prospective students as well as current members of the community might listen to these uh, coffees with the dean. Uh, what what has been most impactful for you here, and what what do you enjoy most about being here in Irvine? First, I would say the students. That was the thing that finalized my decision was the environment of helping each other. Um, I've heard a lot of cutthroat stories about law schools and how the curve can destroy friendships or connections among students, but I haven't found that to be the case and I never wanted that to be the case. Me and my friends, like we'll study together and encourage each other and get excited for each other when we do well. And if we do really poorly, then we're excited for everyone else because that means they did better. So. Uh, that's one of the things that I really like about UCI Law. Um, but ultimately, I would say it's the pro bono opportunities and the clinic programs. Ultimately, the chance for law students to get involved in a way that matters and in a way that they're practicing their legal skills and um, diving into the work with hands-on experience that a lot of people don't get at other law schools or it becomes a competitive endeavor, whereas here there's so many pro bono programs. I think the list has over a hundred projects that students can get involved in. And that's like mind blowing to me um, that we have so much support, not just at the school, but the surrounding community is also very invested. Yeah, it's amazing how much support there is. And as you say, to have more than hundred projects going on at any period of time. Sure, maybe we could end if you were to give one piece of advice for somebody who's coming to look at UCI law and considering law school, what would it be? I would say to Lean into your passions and don't try to fight them off or ignore them because I tried to do that all through undergrad. I tried to do that in law school. I was like, I'll just focus on the money or focus on the success or whatever and try to push out these passionate parts of myself that want to get involved and want to help people. 
Um, but that's, it, it's never one. And so instead it just like makes things a little awkward as I then have to transition back and, and stay in that realm where I really thrive. Um, so I'd, I'd say know yourself and know what excites you and really lean into that and see what law schools provide those opportunities to give back if that's something you're interested in or those schools with organizations that you really care about and really support what you support. Well, Jared, it seems like you've done a great job of creating that balance. Congratulations. And looks like you got a fabulous job lined up. And thanks for all you've done for the community and for the school. Yeah, of course. Thank and, you. And thanks for joining me this morning on Coffee and the Dean. I hope you'll join us on the next episode of Coffee with the Dean.